organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up tonight on Daily Iowa TV, resident University of Iowa students are being encouraged to study abroad. And Iowa City will once again build a temporary shelter for those needing to escape the oncoming winter cold. All that and more coming up. Daily Iowa TV starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Nikki Crossway. And I'm Alara Bartlett. After a week of championship coverage, Saturday's clash with Michigan State is almost here. Everyone on campus is clamoring over Iowa's magical run to Indianapolis. Right off the top, let's toss it over to Taylor Brooks and Danny Payne, who highlight just how the Hawkeyes arrived at undefeated. Thanks, Alara and Nikki. We are just about two days away from the big dance in Indianapolis. And what better way to have a conference championship than with the number four and number five teams in the nation? Probably couldn't have set it up any better myself, that's for sure. Maybe Michigan? Jay Grudock? Eh. Yeah. We'll stick with this story, though. <laughs> Before we get down to what both Iowa and Michigan State plan to bring to Lucas Oil Stadium Saturday night, this 12-0 start for Iowa has been special. I took a look at Iowa's unexpected journey. This sums up last year's season. Well, we're 7-6. You know, this is 2014. I know it's a 15 now. I know uh, I had a missed New Year's, but we're 7-6. You are what your record says uh, you are, according to Bill Parcells. It's a pretty accurate description. And you know, we're a team that came up short this year in several games. And here's this year. A couple years ago, not making a bowl game and all of a sudden 12 0 going into the Big Ten Championship game. In the eyes of many, no one would have ever thought Iowa would be where they are. And as for the players? Like, I never thought about it and then all of a sudden after the Nebraska game we're sitting there like holy cow. Like, we've, we've done pretty well here and we have a chance to even do better. I never thought we'd be sitting here uh, in this, this situation. It started with Iowa's first game against Illinois State for Kirk Ferentz. I go back to the start of the season. That was pretty important. All right, that victory against Illinois State was really important on a lot of levels. But with any sport, the thought of how this season would really turn out is this. We, we, before the season, we said that every game is winnable and every game is also, um, um, we're going to be able to lose every game as well. So, I mean, when, towards the middle of the season, um, we started to realize that, that we had a pretty good team and, um, I mean, we won 12 games on, and this has definitely been, been a sign for us. As 12-0 is a reality now, there's still dreams for what the future could hold. The dream would be the national championship. Like that, that would be uh, amazing. Like you can't put words on that. I know it has been unforgettable for both of us, Danny, and for all of Iowa City. Keep with us later on in the program tonight when we look into these two teams head-to-head. -head. Alara and Nikki, back to you guys. Thanks, guys. Some UI officials say the first month of Bruce Harold's presidency has been all about listening this week. This week, he began speaking. On Wednesday, Harold gave his first presidential report to the State Board of Regents, highlighting his concerns in lack of state funding. Harold is concerned about retaining UI faculty and thinks more can be done to pay them. Then, in a letter to the UI community, Harold unveiled his plan to differentiate between short and long-term issues plaguing the university. He is establishing two teams of people in charge of identifying issues brought to light by the community's shared governance. To keep people informed on the group's progress, the first public forum for the UI president is set for Tuesday, February 23rd. The University of Iowa is making a study abroad more affordable for resident students. This past summer, the UI created a $1,000 need-based scholarship to all in-state Hawkeyes who plan to study abroad. The school wanted to insensitize in-state students to study in a foreign country, prompting the scholarship's creation. The uh, Office of Study Abroad says numbers of study abroad participants in general are not declining, though. Additionally, the office says students from other schools coming to study at Iowa are not affected by the change. But we do have a number of other scholarships for all students with, who can demonstrate financial need and uh, academic um, uh, performance. As of right now, there are no plans for the scholarship to be offered to out-of-state students. 
As it gets colder outside, homeless people need places to stay to persevere the frigid winter. Thanks to a generous donation from Southgate Property Management, the shelter house in Iowa City will again open a temporary shelter this winter. The shelter house, located right off Gilbert Street in Iowa City, can hold between 70 and 90 people during the winter. There, people can count on a safe place to sleep, toiletry items, a meal, and resources to help find a job or permanent housing. All of that is available free of charge to those who follow the shelter's rules. For anybody who is intoxicated, they may be in the middle of an eviction status with, here, with us here at Shelter House, or they may just not want to deal with the rules here. Um, they will be directed to the temporary uh, low barrier shelter across the street. The low barrier shelter is located at the old TM1 building and will house up to 30 people. Kanganelli says they plan to open the shelter on December 14th and run through mid-March. Shelter House is a fundraising in order to keep offering these services to those who need it. If you are interested in help, learning how you can help, you may go to www.shelterhouseiowa.org. Well, Nikki, it is awfully cold outside, and that will be a great help to those who are homeless in Iowa City. Speaking of the cold weather, I wonder when the snow is going to get here. Let's toss it over to Haley in the weather studio to find out. Earlier this week, not only did we experience super cold days, but it was snowing as well. Looking into Friday's forecast, in the morning we will be looking at temps around the low 30s. Leading into the afternoon, it should reach up to the mid 40s at 46 degrees. As that sun goes down for the rest of the night, temperatures will reach a low of middle 30s. Let's take a look at the rest of the week. Saturday will be a beautiful clear day with temperatures of 48 degrees and a low of 30. Grab that umbrella because on Sunday there will be a 40% chance of rain with temps at 44 and a low of 29. Monday and Tuesday we will see clear skies. Monday will be a high of 48 degrees and a low of 32. Tuesday's afternoon will have temps in the low 50s and later on reaching to the mid 30s at 34 degrees. Finishing off the week with partly cloudy skies, Wednesday is a high of 51 and a low of 35. There's a look at the rest of your forecast for the week. Now back to you guys at the desk. Continuing coverage from Wednesday's mass shooting in San Bernardino, California, 14 people were left dead and as many as 21 more injured after two shooters entered a staff holiday banquet and opened fire. The two suspects, reportedly married, were killed late Wednesday evening by pursuing police. Co-workers say one of the suspects was present at the banquet before leaving and coming back with the weapons used in the attack. Inside the attacker's home, officers found 12 pipe bombs and more than 3,000 rounds of ammunition. The shooting was the deadliest in the United States history since the Newtown, Connecticut school massacre. Next Gen Climate Iowa is an organization that is focused on fighting climate change through political action to preserve American health and prosperity. The organization has already reached some of the major universities here in Iowa. I took a look at the meeting this week in Iowa City to discuss the 2015 Paris Climate Conference. There's a lot of activity, sort of a groundswell of activity uh, alongside of and complementing the formal UN process. And, and so what, what the students in Next Gen Climate are doing here at the University of Iowa is important and it's part of a, of a worldwide groundswell that will persuade governmental leaders in Paris to have even more ambitious goals in combating climate change. The group works with local organizers to coordinate volunteer opportunities through social events, phone banks, letters to the editor writing, and political candidate events. Our generation of college students age is kind of the generation that um, is able to going to be able to make the biggest difference. We're the ones that are really um, being faced with this problem. Um, the older generations, you know, they're maybe not going to be around when the climate change problems um, become super serious. So we're the ones that really need to take action and have a voice. And as I've seen through my work with NextGen, we really are the ones that are taking those steps. Flyers are all over campus promoting the organization's 50 by 30 campaign in hopes that there will be 50% clean energy in America by the year 2030. Well, Nikki, the Hawkeyes are 12-0 and 0 on the field, but one of the team's leaders was recognized this week for his off-field pursuits. Senior Captain Jordan Lomax was named a second-team academic All-American on Thursday. The Maryland native and economics major has started all 12 games at safety this season for Iowa, while also getting it done in the classroom, too. 
For more on Lomax and the Hawkeyes heading into Saturday's Big Ten Championship, let's toss it over to Taylor Brooks and Danny Payne, who are standing by in the sports studio. Guys? Nikki Nalera, going along with outstanding recognition is also defensive back Desmond King. King was named one of the five finalists for the Walter Camp Foundation Player of the Year. Other finalists include Alabama's Derrick Henry, Stanford's Christian McCaffrey, Clemson's Deshaun Watson, and Oklahoma's Baker Mayfield. A very notable group of young men there, and just another thing Iowa is being <laughs> recognized for. But the biggest thing, this Big Ten Championship coming up on Saturday night against Michigan State. As this will be Iowa's first appearance in the Big Ten Championship, this is Michigan State's third time going to the Big Dance for the big game, excuse me, in five years. The Spartans won the Cotton Bowl last year in the Rose Bowl in 2014. And ex this experience, te this team has a lot of experience in this atmosphere. As for Iowa, not so much, but it doesn't seem to be a factor. For more on these two teams headed in head to head, Katie Reber is standing by. Thanks, Danny and Taylor. This marquee matchup will showcase two teams that have a lot in common. Let's break these similarities down by the numbers. 66,700 fans will be at Lucas Oil Stadium to watch the 12-0 Iowa Hawkeyes take on the 11-1 Michigan State Spartans on Saturday night. Iowa's defense leads the Big Ten with 17 interceptions and right behind them in second place is Michigan State with 14. Both schools are 1-for-2 in interceptions lost, but Iowa has thrown only three interceptions while Michigan State has thrown five. Iowa and Michigan State share the conference lead with 25 takeaways takeaways and a plus 14 turnover margin. Both teams run more of a traditional style of offense and their respective stats show how this has proved successful for both the Hawkeyes and Spartans. Iowa averages 33.7 points per game and Michigan State 33.4. Michigan State converts 50.6% of its third down attempts best in the Big Ten while Iowa converts 44.2%, number three in the Big Ten. Yeah, it just so happens we have two teams that are fairly similar. We're, we're different in a lot of ways, but we're similar in some ways, too. And uh, you know, it's just kind of the way it's worked out. Reporting outside Kinnick Stadium, this has been Katie Reber, Daily Iowa TV Sports. Danny and Taylor, back to you at the studio. Thanks, Katie. Two very similar teams here, Danny. But with one goal, and that's winning the championship this Saturday. The winner will be guaranteed a spot in the top four in the college football playoff semifinals. I know here around Iowa City, everyone wants it to be the black and gold. And Daily Iowa TV sports reporters Mark Fry and Ashlyn Bauer checked in on some fans rooting for Iowa. Thanks, guys. The last time the Hawkeyes were undefeated was back in 1922 when Niall Kinnick was only four years old and Yankee Stadium was being built for the first time. Fast forward to 2015 and the Hawkeyes are 12-0 for the first time in school history. The Hawkeyes will try to defeat their undefeated season this Saturday at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. We asked a few students around campus what they thought of the undefeated season and what they think of the Big Ten Championships this weekend. What's your favorite memory from this season? Uh, I'd have to say the pit game when we uh, barely sque squeezed out that win with that field goal. This has been your favorite moment so far from this season. Oh man, just honestly seeing my, my family is, are huge Iowa and Iowa football fans. So um, honestly just seeing my brother and my dad just so excited about the Hawkeyes. What do you think the score is going to be? Oh. Well, I'm, I got to say go Hawks. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a low scoring game. Um, I give it, you know, maybe total of. 30 points the most so it's gonna be close I don't know what do you think's been like the biggest key so far this year for the Hawks being 12-0 uh, I think CJ Beathard has really stepped up and has been doing a good really good job so I think he's just gonna keep carrying us to more victories can you believe that the Hawks are 12-0 uh, I had always wished it for it to be true but for this to actually be happening it's a dream come true are you a Hawkeye fan of course I'm a Hawkeye fan what do you think the score is going to be? 28 to 31, Iowa. As you can see, Ashland, these Hawkeye fans have a lot of memories from this historic 12-0 season. These Hawkeye fans hope the memories will continue this Saturday night at the Big Ten Championships. Back to you guys. Thanks, Ashland and Mark. Danny, favorite memory from this season? Go. 
I think it has to be uh, November 14th, that grapple in the gridiron, mm -hmm. followed by the awesome game with Minnesota, so I'm going with that one. How about you? That's pretty good. I'll probably do, take it to the Pittsburgh game when Marshall King kicked the 57-yard field goal. I was running around the field. Everyone was running around the field. No idea, but that was probably definitely my favorite memory. Plenty of memories still to be made, and that includes a bowl game. After the game Saturday night, it'll be Sunday at noon where the bowl selection is made. And here are some predictions. Many media outlets thinking different things, but all thinking Michigan State is going to pull away with this one. ESPN has us in the Fiesta Bowl or the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. What are you thinking, Danny? Now I picked Iowa to win the Big Ten Championship and go to the Orange Bowl against Clemson. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I want to go to the Rose Bowl. Pasadena's calling my name. I was named too. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll step away from football for just a few minutes for some Iowa men's hoops. Kinnick isn't the only place exciting wins have been happening. It's also in Carver. Last night, Iowa completed their ACC Big Ten Challenge with success over Florida State. Jordan Maloney has more. The Iowa men's basketball team pulled an overtime shift late Wednesday night against the Florida State Seminoles. The Hawkeyes' five starters played the Seminoles tight from start to finish, each hitting in the double digits. When getting up from what looked like a head injury in overtime, Peter Jack told the ref that he was just doing his job before hitting a three-point field goal to give the Hawkeyes the 78-75 to point win over the Seminoles. Jack led the black and gold, putting 24 points on the board, a season high for the 6'6 junior. I'm really happy for him. He had a very good game, you know, even when he kicked it off his foot, he went back and got it, made, made a big play there. Uh, he just, he's that kind of person, he's, you know, he's not afraid of the moment and he made a big shot. Happy for him. But he wasn't the only Iowa starter with an impressive game. All five starters played for over 30 minutes each and racked up 70 of the team's 78 points. It showed a lot of leadership, a lot of fight. I mean, it just pretty much shows you how, uh, how our team is. At the end of regulation, the Hawks and the Seminoles had matching 63s on the scoreboard, but Iowa's high-intensity overtime play proved to be too much for Florida State. We ain't played to our full potential yet, and uh, we just gonna keep working. But we just kept fighting and uh, came, came up with a dub. Wednesday's game in Carver was the last of the Big Ten ACC Challenge, with the Big Ten coming out on top 8-6. to six. I'm Jordan Maloney, reporting from inside Carver Hawkeye Arena with Daily Iowan TV Sports. Thanks for that, Jordan. Iowa goes on to play the University of Kansas City, Missouri it's inside Carver Hawkeye Arena Saturday afternoon. People can go to Carver to watch a little basketball, go back to the TV, to Fox to, for the Big Ten Championship. As for us, we will be in Indianapolis, so keep updated on dailyiowin.com and meet us right back here on Sunday night for the full recap. Lara and Nikki, back to you. That's all we have for you tonight on Daily Iowa TV. Be sure to check out our website, dailyiowin.com, for all the latest news between now and Sunday. For Daily Iowa TV, I'm Nikki Crossway. And I'm Alara Bartlett. Have fun this weekend, Iowa City.